coming up on this edition of Gascast. With the ink barely dry on Stefan Payne's contract, we sit down to discuss Rovers' deadline day deals, summer signings, the state of our squad and the loss at Posh. We then look ahead to Saturday's clash with Stanley and devote the last 10 minutes of this pod to playing out an excellent interview by Max with Ashley Belston, the inspirational gas head behind this Sunday's Martin Belston Memorial Match. Bristol Rovers fans podcast. And joining me today to get stuck into all of that are Harley Thorne and Tom Metcalf. Out the gas. Out the gas. Out the gas. Uh, so just to let our listeners know, Mets does have to be at the planetarium for seven. <laughs> <laughs> so you may hear him get up and randomly leave. <laughs> Uh, which I think will be a bit like, you remember when Jeff Hughes just randomly sprinted down the tunnel at the Mem yeah. when his wife was in labour? <laughs> yeah, similar um, to that. Yeah, very <laughs> similar. Uh, so I guess there's only one place to start on a day when Rovers finally added two new strikers to the squad. Uh, Payne for an undisclosed fee from Shrewsbury and Alex Jakubiak on loan from Watford. Uh, you have no idea. I have no idea. It, no, I have no idea. Uh, so we'll come to you first, Mets. Stefan Payne, what are your thoughts on that sign-in? He doesn't look happy, does he? In all his pictures, I've he seen him. So he looks so pissed off. He looks pissy. Yeah. Um, but six foot two, should be kind of prime age, 26, 27. In fact, it's his birthday tomorrow, tomorrow. I heard. Yeah. So, birthday. I mean, as long as he can stick it in the net. He was Shrew's top goal scorer, wasn't he, last season. So And he wasn't even first choice there. So a lot of those were off the bench. So. Yeah, so pretty chuffed, actually, with him. Um, and the fee... I'm hearing rumours about 200k, which seems pretty good business as well. So, yeah, pretty tough for that. Um, Weirdly, Shrewsbury seemed very happy with 200k, which I wouldn't have expected anyone to be with their top goal scorer, yep. given he scored a similar amount of goals to Ellis, if not the exact same amount of goals. The visual second choice or second or third choice striker. Well, that first choice has gone back to his parent club. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Their first choice from last season, Carlton Morris, yeah. left. Or well, he's gone back back to Norwich. Uh, and this bloke, Payne, is now their new number nine. They gave him the number nine shirt and he started on Saturday for them. So he was their first choice, but now he's gone. And I'm not even sure if they've replaced him, but... Oh, dear. We'll never know, but they did sign Oliver Norburn today. So... Well, I was going to say, he's got mixed reviews from Shrewsbury fans. I've looked on their forum. Some of them are... Some of them are gutted, which I think is a good sign, uh, and some of them seem pretty pleased he's it's, gone. It's How really, much attention do you pay to that? It's really similar to what I read about Rodman. Really similar. They, they're completely split on it. Some of them are like, oh, well, he's not really the reason we did so well. But now I'm wondering, who was the reason they did so well? Yeah. Because they've lost half the team, and they don't seem to... More think than half. I think they've lost every <laughs> single man. <laughs> yeah, it's not ideal. So, I, I don't know. I think... I can only assume they're being somewhat bitter or they're just not very good at judging it. <laughs> I'd yeah. like to think it's that second one because, you know, he's their top goal scorer. He scored the same amount of goals as Ellis in, in the same league. So with our style of play and the fact he's 26, he's, he's going to improve slightly under Darrow, I reckon. Should be a good sign. And Stewart, obviously, seems right at coaching strikers. Marcus as Tom Nichols proves. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so another thing I'm confused about is that I went on the Shrewsbury forum, as I said, and a lot of their uh, posters are saying that most of his 14 goals were penalties. And then I looked earlier, and two of them were penalties. So Only two? Only two oh, of 14. Yeah. How many Ellis, do you know how many Ellis scored? More no. than that. I'd say three or four. That I would have trivia thought. that Gascast listeners deserve yeah, to hear. Exactly. Yeah, that was a stat it. they were looking up. Yeah. But now we <laughs> haven't provided it and they will be turning this off. It's a great um, shame. So yeah, so I think 12 goals from open play when he didn't start most games is pretty More than Ellis got. More than Ellis, yeah. And, you know, he may fit into our team differently than he did Shrewsbury. It's every team's different, isn't it? And I think the way our midfield is is now, which seems to have a lot of creativity. It's ready yeah, for massive. a larger yeah. striker with yeah. physical presence, which yeah. is why everyone was so panicky about it. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see him play, and the second that I saw that we were linked with him, this one actually got me slightly excited, whereas a lot of the other links, including Bakayoko, did not. <laughs> so. Yeah, Bakayoko was a proper, proper panic buy, wasn't he? <laughs> Just, he, he was, what, the fourth-choice striker at Walsall, barely scores... Everyone was slagging him off, but we were happy to pay 250k or whatever it was for him. I'm like, well, if we've paid less money for a player that's much more established at a team that 
got to the playoff final last year. I don't really understand why Bakayoko no. was first on the list. <laughs> but the and fact that he turned us down is quite funny. So. Yeah. And after we missed out on Bakayoko, I was expecting two Jakubiaks, basically. Like yeah. two youngsters yeah, yeah, on yeah, loan yeah. from somewhere, which would have been a bit disappointing. So the fact we got one who's a decent player from League One, I'm pretty happy with. Um, Harley, you obviously love to overanalyze a YouTube compilation. of <laughs> <laughs> And you must have watched a pain one. So have you got any... I'm not hot takes on this compilation. What my hot take was is that Shrewsbury really don't upload very good quality highlight videos, okay. and, and not and they don't tag them well. So finding <laughs> Stephen Payne's goals was really quite a needle in a haystack affair. But I, I did, mean, I'll be honest, it wasn't the inside that I was looking for. I, I, I tried. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't succeed very much. He just finishes them, doesn't he? I found better quality highlights from Dover. That's all I'm saying about Shrewsbury. Mm. I'm not surprised they've lost their players. They don't put... <laughs> <laughs> their YouTube videos are very poor. Very, very poor. The media um, team need to kick out the ass. But no, he, he finishes... He stays very central and he sticks it in the net. Whereas with Bakayoko, I was worried because he goes out wide, similar to how Gaffney did. We need someone to sit in the middle whilst everyone else roams. We have many players that are going to move around the front. We just need him to sit in the middle, and if it goes near the keeper, nick it round him. And that's what he does. No headers, though, I've noticed. I was specifically looking out for headers, and there was not a single header. Well, Rodman's going to have to up his crossing game then, isn't he? Yeah, he is. But we were just sat outside the um, the white line, and Rodman and Payne walked past us, didn't they? And he looked like a bit of a unit. I I fangled hard, but no, I didn't have have the courage to speak to him. I nearly invited (laughs) him in. That would have been a coup. Yeah. Could have got him on the pod. Yeah, should have. Why are they not here? Been you well, I'm looking at the table. Be lovely. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let's move on to the other one then. Who came massively out of the blue? There's no rumours at all about this bloke, Alex Jakubiak. I think there's no rumours because Daryl probably decided it about 20 minutes before the deadline. <laughs> yeah. so, um, Are you know. surprised at how small he is? So, seeing as he's meant to be our second number nine, five foot. He gets small, but, as I said earlier, he yeah. gets smaller every time. Between Charlie five foot seven and five foot nine. He is the smallest target man that, since Don Telford. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, I, I, I've been following his career for years. Yeah, I know him inside out. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you want to just run through his strength? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see him as a replacement for Telford? Like I, depth on the bench. I can't basically. believe we need a replacement for Telford, but yeah, I suppose so. But, I mean, Daryl said he wants two number nines. I don't know what he's looking for in a number nine. Maybe it's the hard-working kind of Chris Beardsley role that, he's, that I'm talking about, you know, Chris Beardsley. Definitely. The hard-working striker, maybe that's what he means rather than the target man. But I would have thought that we were looking for someone six foot-ish at least. Yeah. Instead, he signed someone that's just impossibly small. So... I wouldn't say impossibly. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I'm yeah. that, so yeah. I wouldn't say impossibly. <laughs> I, I don't know how tall I am, but... I met Sean Wright Phillips once and he felt very small. That's all I'm saying. I don't know how tall Sean Wright Phillips is. Very oh, small. Is Probably it? the same size as this man. <laughs> so I wouldn't back him to tower above someone and win a header. But he's come from Watford. Is he rated there, do you know, at all? He scored quite a few in their youth teams, I think. And for Falkirk last season. Okay. Yeah. But who we're not sure what level they're at, are we? We don't know if that's they in the Prem or Champ. They could be playing in the youth leagues for all. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't know. Do you know? No, I have no idea. We're rubbish. Why do we bother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we our stats together. Thanks for listening, guys. listen, guys. Um, yeah, so we, we know nothing about this bloke, do we? Yes, yeah. So we should, we should probably make Good it. Good signing. Up. Yeah, great. It could be amazing, for all we know. Yeah, I hope he does really well. If if I'm honest, I was a little underwhelmed when it came out, but obviously I hope it's A brilliant. little? I was massively underwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he turns out to be brilliant. Weren't course. we linked with some bloke from Cardiff? Like Healy, was it? He yeah, I don't, be a I don't know what's happened there because I would have thought he'd bite our, bite our hands off at joining us given he was a tall key last season. And well, I the thing is, even his brother said on Twitter, yeah, my brother's coming to Rovers. But then I noticed that Healy then started finding our meltdown about him joining basically and favouring loads of derogatory comments from oh, Rovers fans about how shit he was sake. and how underwhelming it was. And then suddenly the the move collapsed. So well, I mean to be fair, anyone that's slagged off is a bit silly because he's not coming anywhere now. So no. <laughs> he'll enjoy himself on Cardiff's bench, and then he'll probably be playing non-league next season. So maybe he should have taken the move. Sorry. 
All right, so let's um, let's look back over the summer as a whole then and how it's left our squad looking until January at least. Uh, I want to go through each department of the team, starting with the keepers where there was absolutely no movement. What about the tea ladies? Can we start there? The tea ladies, yeah. Have we got any new tea ladies in? Probably. I would have thought so with We've the bar getting upgraded. Staff, so yeah. true. Maybe. Yeah, new bar staff. Yeah. Hopefully, because they're rubbish. They are rubbish. <laughs> Which <Which you've> means <laughs> insult. Yeah, we're, we're going off topic now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all right. So, off the tea ladies, goalkeepers. Happy with that. They're, I don't think anyone wanted the first one. They're fine. They? I'm they're happy with both of them, to be honest. Defence. So, defence, we had Brown, obviously, gone to Pompey, Sweeney. Went back to his club. Uh, so those out. And then we've got Holmes Dennis in as the only defender, which leaves our defenders as Ledbetter, Partington, James Clark, Lockyer, Craig, Broadbent, Meniers, Holmes Dennis and Kelly. Sounds uh, tidy, but Holmes Dennis doesn't have the ability to run at the moment, which is a shame. No, well, that's what I was going to say. So he's got rave reviews from Pompey, Pompey fans who saw him for like 20 minutes before he got injured, so I don't know what they're basing that on. But Huddersfield fans rate him highly. I think, I think he's, he's played quite a few times for... In terms of standard, he's very decent. It's just the it, fitness thing. Yeah, it's good. Injury. It's, we're clearly not going to see him for a long time, which reminds me a lot of Partington. And in fact, many of Daryl's signings, I'm sure we've signed very unfit. And we've had to wait quite or some coming time back for them to... Yeah, so... I'm excited to see him play, but I think it's going to be quite some time. So I think we do need a lone left back. Yeah, I expect one is on its way soon, but James Clark was not inspiring no. on Saturday. Well, one thing I noticed when um, when the move happened was that Daryl Clark said that he can be one of the best left backs in League One, which he's not usually the sort of manager who yeah. comes out and says something like that. That's quite a bold thing for him to say, so I feel like he must rate him a lot. Um, so you would get a left back on a loan, do you think? What Kelly? Would you see him as? I mean, back up, or we haven't really seen enough of him, I guess, if we to say. I, I definitely would play Kelly, play Kelly, but I mean, I don't think Daryl wants to, otherwise, he probably would have on Saturday. Mm-hmm. First game of the season is a good opportunity to kind of risk it a bit because no one judges you too harshly anyway, so I don't think he's going to. Um, therefore, we should probably just bring in you know, someone similar to Bola, I guess, like a a really young player from a Premier League kind of size yeah. or someone like that yeah. just to fill the space because James Clark's not a natural left back, left back. I mean no, absolutely he not. obviously thinks he can play everywhere along the defence but <laughs> he definitely prefers the right side so yeah and the other the other position the defence people were saying was centre back they'd have liked to see a centre back come in which I, I would as well and I hope that does happen by the end of the window uh, Metz do you think we need another centre back? Need probably not one definitely I think I'd like to see a big imposing centre back because we saw with the goals which we'll go on to um, both crosses and that and it was just Craig's too small I think to play centre back and although he's really good at marshalling the defence I think he is just too small he should be in the dressing room not on the pitch yeah unfortunately and Locks isn't like the top quality in the air so I'd I'd like to see an absolute unit come in Mm. I would argue that we've got that unit you describe, two of them on in the reserves, essentially. Well, I think um, Rowland's injured, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he got a very okay. bad injury in the last game of his loan at Swindon. Oh. So he's out. But Broadbent still is, I think, capable of being that player. But he had a mayor at Exeter, didn't he? Against Exeter. We don't count pre-season. Daryl says he doesn't count pre-season, therefore he should have been in the lineup. Therefore, Daryl does count pre season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. he's lying to us. All, yeah, yeah. As I'm sure he usually does in his press conferences <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, I think Broad Ben should definitely be given a chance. I, what's the point of bringing him in if you're not going to? He impressed last season. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, been. in the Daryl Clark way, he just randomly finds himself on the bench and can't get out. So. And it's nice because he plays out of defence as well. He's not. Yeah. Lockyer and Craig are much more get the ball, hoof it up, whereas he. Pass it out to midfield and stuff. So yeah. I think that helps. Uh, midfield. So midfield, we lost. I think there's more than this, but Byron Moore and Ryan Broom were out. And then in, we've had Upson, Rodman, and Matthews. So our midfielders are Lines, Ollie Clark, Circum Sinclair, Upson, Luke Russ, Bennett, Rodman, Matthews, Mensa. Uh, for me, this is the area of the squad where there's been the biggest upgrade over the summer. And yeah. I'd say it's now the strongest area. Yeah. Um, and I think that we've now got strength and depth, which we massively lacked in centre midfield last season. Mm. And hopefully, we'll get some goals from the wings. Do you, are you happy with the midfield for this season? Oh, massively, yeah. I think 
like you said, it is definitely our strongest place. And I think Ollie Clark starting every game was asking a bit much. I think he's developed, but last season he didn't come on as much as he did the year before. So I think it would be good for him to have to fight for his place. Upson is undoubtedly a very impressive signing, but also one that makes sense on for, for everyone, really. So good to get that one done early, sensible. Obviously, we've got Circum, it was quality. Um, lines he's probably in his later years to say the least so you know I think Ollie Clark will hopefully be ready when he steps down but yeah I think it's a strong centre on the wings it's a little bit more difficult especially since you consider it in midfield because it's kind of up front as well yeah it is well yeah. Formation. yeah. Um, Matthews I like the kind of signing that Matthews is whereas like a non-league player with potential Mensa was the same haven't seen much out of him yet but given the benefit of a doubt um, Bennett is Bennett you know he's probably going to look pretty poor for 60% of the time and the rest of the time hopefully he'll, he'll be lining it up so but you expect that from him so yeah I think he's probably our strongest place. Uh, I like the look of what I've seen from Matthew so far actually I know we've only seen like really small bits and pieces but he seems like the sort of player who's really going to fit in well I think for the type of player that DC likes on the wings where he cuts inside and he's quite creative mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to be really decent for us uh, so yeah so I think we're all happy with the midfield basically and there's a lot of our fans saying they think it's one of the strongest in League One I'm I think, not sure I think Upson in particular is a Mets player yeah. oh he's yeah player. absolutely sits deep Probably tucks his shirt in. You know, <laughs> lovely guy. Probably a really nice bloke, but get stuck in. I was also really impressed with the signing of Rodman as well. I thought that was a real coup for us. And mm -hmm. he can put a ball in. I'm sure he'll chip in with a few as well. I think he scored 10 ish for Shrewsbury last season. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I'm really chuffed with him. And obviously, Upson is. Yeah, I think him rotating with Matthews is kind of just perfect, really, because hopefully Matthews will be ready for two seasons time when Rodman because Rodman's not exactly young so no. it's a nice nice way to do it I think. you didn't say that to his face earlier did you? no I got too nervous that happened <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what happened <laughs> <laughs> alright let's move on to the attack then uh, so we had Telford go back uh, Gaffney and Ellis sold and coming in we've obviously had Payne Riley and Jakubiak um on paper, for me, this does not look like a massive upgrade, if, you, if you an felt, upgrade at all. You failed to mention the transfer in of loads of money into Wales' bank account. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a new Porsche on Wales. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you concerned about the attack at all? Um, I wouldn't say concerned. I think Ellis and Payne look pretty much like for like. This Jibu Kubiak bloke, I'm not sure about. Riley, he seems like he might actually be a really good player um, from what kind of people have said about him in um, in Scotland no not concerned really okay. I think we'll be alright because we've got yeah we always play a three so as long as Tom Nichols is not getting too many minutes I think we'll be absolutely fine but that's a bit unfair we should he's been given till kind of Christmas unofficially hasn't he really yeah. to I kind can, of prove himself I can only assume that at home we're going to play a Nichols next to a Payne because I think definitely against the uh, the weaker side. Because otherwise, there's Saturday. hardly a point in having all these number tens, which we have. I mean, I, yeah. I'd even consider Yakubiak. Is that how we're saying it? Yakubiak, yeah. the Watford player. <laughs> I'd pretty much consider him a number ten as well. So yeah. we've basically got Payne next to X, one of the others. We've yeah. got three of them. So we're going to need to play them at some point. I'd assume we're going to play them at home and just have wingers that sit quite far forward and be quite attacking away from home. Just Payne sat in the middle. Mopping up sounds sounds pretty good to me, but Riley's the kind of striker I'm pretty happy to see us bring in. I mean, I he's a risk. He's not definitely going to light it up, but because he's never played in this country before. Yeah, but I mean, he, he clearly knows where the net is, so we'll see. He mm. probably played at a standard higher than the conference. I'd like to think, but he scored a few goals, so mm. whatever. We'll see how it goes. People seem quite impressed with him in um, in the friendlies. I know, but he didn't play many. He was injured for most of them, so I think he's going to take a little while to get properly up to speed. Um, and I I kind of see him as the Gaffney replacement as well. Like of the strikers we bought in, I see Payne replacing Harrison, Jakubiak. I think is basically going to be Telford and be on the bench a lot and come in for ten minutes every now and then. And I think Riley's basically the Gaffney replacement, and that he's not 
as tall and physical maybe, but it sounds like he runs the channels a lot, which Gaffney spent a lot of his time doing. So I liked Gaffney, but I don't think he's massive boots to fill for Ryder. I think he could quite potentially be as good as him. He scored on the weekend, didn't he? He did. He did. Yeah, he he was good finish. I watched the yeah, highlights earlier. Yeah. As, that's Gaffney, not Riley, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just think I was really confused. But yeah. It's interesting with um, Gaffney when DC said about him getting a really good financial package from Salford because it sounds like he's got a pay rise to go down to the... I think he almost definitely has. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. All those old Man United players made a fair bit, I guess, when, yeah. they, were, when they were there. Um what are your thoughts then on how slow we were in replacing Ellis? Because he left, when was he left? I got it written down there. 24th of July he left, which I know isn't a massive amount of time, but I was kind of hoping Ellis would go, DC would be told instantly, right, this is what you've got to spend, and we'd be out making bids the next few days. Because we must have known that there was a chance he was going to leave this summer, and it just feels like we've been so slow. Yeah, so... I'm really surprised because A, um, DC said a little while ago when um, the head of recruitment came in that they had a list of replacement players for each player. They had a list of people. If they went, right, we'll get this person, that person in. So I'm surprised it's taken this long. And B, I'm surprised it, there was a big delay between Ellis being sold and DC knowing how much he could spend. So you could think that's straight away, like, oh, we've got X for Ellis. All right, Daryl, here you go. This is your budget. Go for it. Because very time critical transfers, so yeah. it seems silly to like wait a few days and then have a think about it. it. Just yeah, I was very surprised at how long it took. Are they? You just wonder how far down this chief scout, chief head of recruitment's list this very obvious League One player was. Because I don't think any respectable head of recruitment would have this very blatant player very high up it. So you're about pain. Yeah, okay. I feel like. It seems as if we probably panicked our way to him. Whether he proves out to be good is another question. But I don't believe for a second he was in the top ten targets. No, I don't. I, th- I really yeah, don't. I think he and that's a lot of people off. that we failed to get. <laughs> so and well, that's ignoring the people we couldn't afford. I was going to say, bearing in mind, I think probably in the top ten would have been Stockley, Doidge, Devante Cole, yeah. Ivan Tony, who went to Peter Day from Newcastle for permanent. I think those four for definite would have been in there and I imagine they got instantly struck off as soon as we put in an inquiry for them and heard how much they wanted. So I think of the ones we could afford, he is probably still quite a way down pain, but I don't think he'd have been massively far down. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's not, what, it's not the kind of signing I was expecting from it, put it that way. I kind yeah. of, I expected someone a little bit more, I don't know, even if it was a more rough player, I suppose, just someone someone from non-league or just a Daryl-type signing. This doesn't seem like a Daryl-type signing mm. yeah. at all. I was is... expecting us to go, yeah, League 2 or Conference, because like, we were talking about earlier about Danny Rowe from Fylde, which would make sense as a signing, because he scored tons last season, he's a big bloke, mm. but it didn't seem like... He might have been after Payne, actually. He might have been the one after. He might have mm. been number 12 on the list. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, just want to touch on something you said, Mets, about how long it seemed to take from us to sell him for Daryl to know how much he had to spend. Because I think there was, I think there was at least two interviews in between him going and uh, and us start the rumours sort of us putting bids in for people where DC said, yeah, we're looking for someone, but I have no idea what I got to spend yet. Yeah. Which I, I well, when he first said that, I was fuming because that is so. The rumours came out on the Friday, right? I believe. What about Ellis? Yeah. yeah. And he went on Monday. Yeah. Or DC basically confirmed it on the Sunday. The He's got a year. weekend there to be talking to Hanny, Wilde, whoever the fuck manages the transfers. Yeah. Someone should have given him a budget within that weekend and there should have been a decision on who we were going to bid for the Monday morning when he was leaving. Yeah. There's, I can't see for the life of me how people can be too busy to have those conversations. If you're too busy, it's not good enough. Frankly, it's a big no. thing. It's a star striker. And the other thing I was going to add is do you think if you if DC's never going to say this out loud, obviously, but do you think DC would have been happy to swap Payne for Harrison? No, I don't think he would. No, have been no I don't think so. he would have. He absolutely loved Ellis. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think Ellis added so much defensively as well. I think the amount of um, the amount of corners and crosses that Ellis headed out of our box, what well, corners I'm talking about in particular, and um, 
I, from the sounds of the description of the player, the pain is, I don't think he's going to add that for us. So I think we'll still lose a lot from not no. having Ellis. And you kind of feel like with Ellis as well, he's kind of kicking on massively from last season. You feel that was only going to go one way and he is yeah. going to become a championship striker. So He was developing each season. Well, hang on. So, that, so my question has changed here. Do we all agree that it's a downgrade? It's a tough one. I think on ability as it stands now, it's probably like for like, but for potential, it's a massive downgrade. Ellis will obviously go on to be a lot better than yeah. Payne has ever been. And yeah. will ever I would, be. The there only thing I would argue is I think Payne might suit the role better without us realising, in terms of Ellis runs around a lot and is very, he's got a bit more pace than Payne, I think, but... I think Payne is more likely to sit in the middle and actually stay where we need him to be. Whereas Ellis worked arguably too hard and ended up God knows where half the time. It, well, we'll see how badly it affects us defensively, but mm. I think it might he might be more likely to stick it in the net in the box. Because we always get the ball across the box and we seem to never be there. And there's yeah. no one in the so middle to finish it yeah. off. We'll yeah. see if Payne's getting his foot ahead of the keeper and just knocking it into the bottom corner. Yeah. And obviously we don't definitely know what fee we got for Ellis, but it seems to be pretty common knowledge now that we're getting it in instalments, the 750k. Mm-hmm. And we're paying the Shrewsbury one in instalments apparently. Oh, are we? Three, three instalments. Oh. But I've, said it. I've seen on quite a few places that the Ellis one is being paid in five 150k instalments, which would kind of make sense as to the sort of players we've been going after because they're around that sort of oh, figure. I see what I mean, yeah. Because we've obviously got 150k now, and then we'll yeah. get 150k in six months or whatever. I mean, for me to lose Ellis for 150k right now is shocking. I can't believe we weren't able to negotiate more money up front. Yeah. How? How? I don't. That's Ellis is surely worth 750k up front to yeah. a championship team. They yeah. have much, much more than that in the bank. They there is no excuse whatsoever for not receiving that in one lump sum. I agree. What did, they, what did Ipswich just pay? Was it Ipswich where that Caden Jackson's just gone for silly money? 1.6 million for a Macron. To Ipswich. To Ipswich, right? As well. Yeah. And they've paid over got a double. million more. Yeah. Than we got for Ellis Harrison. Yeah. That's sickening. <laughs> it is. Isn't Jackson three years older and only played League Two football? I don't think he's three years old. Uh, Maybe a year old. older then. Yeah. Something. I think he might be 25. But he's only played League Two football and we sold him. We lost a million pounds on him. Are you joking? How is that possible? I feel like we're really <laughs> soft touches sometimes in the transfer market. I do. I, I think we do sell off players cheaper than a lot of other teams. And I don't know if that's because we give out short contracts, which does pay off realistically for the performances we're getting, but it then does leave us at risk of selling off players cheap because they're coming up to their last year. Yeah. I don't know how Peterborough do it. Every single year they unearth the striker and then sell them. Because they buy so many. They always buy more than they need. But then, then do they give them long deals? Or they just... Well, it's like last year, for example, they got Miller, who was an obvious one. Yeah. They got him in for the sake of it. Who else did they get? Can't even bloody remember any of them now. But they... Oh, Marriott. They got Mar- Marriott. Marriott. They didn't need Marriott. They just got him because they heard he might be available for nearly a million. Brought him in. And there was another one they got... Miller failed hugely, yeah, but they sold Marion for nearly £5 million. Pounds. Which more than <laughs> pays off both of them. <laughs> but it, they take risks, and on paper but it seems they, like they're waste. Oh, and they got Bogolin on loan oh, yeah. for no reason whatsoever. They just did it because it was available, and they knew they might be able to make the championship. They didn't, but they sold Marion for five mil. So. Yeah. It feels like they almost do a bit of a scattergun thing. Like this summer yeah. where they've got Matt Godden from Stevenage, Ivan Tony. They've signed a couple of other strikers as well, I think. Yeah, they and have. They're fairly obvious strikers, but they're ones who you require more funds than we've got to go and get them. Yeah. But then if just one of them pays off, they're so good at holding out for a bigger fee, unlike us. Whereas we've, we've signed Payne, a lone striker, that's that's it. Yeah. If if they don't work out, have got a long time to see them play. I think, yeah, with, with Payne being our only biggest striker, I think if he in particular doesn't work out... If he gets injured with, as well. Yeah, or we, gets injured. Our yeah, entire yeah. Fairly, style of play is screwed. We're yeah. fairly up against it. We've got some out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Um, all right. So let's move on then and talk about our first game of the season, which was the obviously the two undefeated Peterborough. Uh, Harley, for you, was this? Did this highlight or Harley Almets, whichever one you want to see on this? 
did the two goals that we conceded in particular highlight the need for a big dominant centre back? In the well, end? all I can say is I got on this quicker than any of our strikers got on it at Peterborough. Got on what? You've just set it up. I need, right, basically what you said is one of us needs to get on it. That's what needed to be done. Oh, okay. yeah. See what I'm doing here? Yeah. See what I'm doing here? Basically, no physical striker. <laughs> Nichols was better than I'd ever expected him to be, but not anywhere near the striker that need that is needed in the front three. That's that's about it, really. I'd say he was kind of played out of position a little bit, Nichols. I know we didn't have a lot of Start. options, but he's not the man to lead the line away from home in a game like that. No. no, absolutely not. But he, he did admirably. Like A lot of stuff was knocked up to him that they had two... Well, I couldn't tell if they were massive or just massive in comparison to Nichols, but... I think they've got a huge team. Yeah. yeah. They... Yeah. Nichols did what he could, and a lot of the times I was actually surprised at how well he did hold it up, but we it very much highlighted the need. And actually, I think what you said at, right at the top was right in that it highlighted the need for a big, dominant centre-back as well, because... The balls that were coming in, they need to get gone because otherwise they go in the net. Well, the first goal, oh. I don't know if you've watched it back. You know, yeah. And uh, Matt Godden, who scored it, who we just mentioned a minute ago, isn't the biggest player. I think he's about 5'10". So I think Lockyer's actually taller than him. And the only difference is that Godden jumps and Lockyer doesn't jump. Like, that's the only reason why he beats Lockyer to the ball. If Lockyer bothers to actually jump off the ground, yeah. I mean, I think, that away. I think the dominant defender thing is getting thrown about a little bit too much and that I don't necessarily think that was why those were conceded. They were really stupid goals to concede. The ball was put in blatantly. No one seemed to get anywhere near it. I don't think the height was necessarily the problem. No, but I mean dominant as in someone like... Someone actually would have... Like Peter Hartley, right? Peter Hartley was shit. (laughs) (laughs) But he threw himself at headers, both defensively and attacking. You could tell he's a sort of centre-back who just loves to head the ball. Yeah. Like, a ball comes into the box, and, and he's I like, right, that Craig fucking ball is mine, I'm yeah. heading this bastard out of the box. And he's got up there and he headed it away. Is that not Tony Craig? No, I don't think it is. No, I don't think it is. He's not he that sort of likes, player. What does he like to do then? Lump it? No, but he's just, he's, it's just, it's almost like a mentality thing, I think. Like, Aggression. Hartley had that, men- and oh, yeah. Steve Elliott had that mentality, a ball comes in the box. Elliott was, how many times? He put his head through that ball like he wanted to break his Yeah, ball. exactly. And I don't see Lockyer or Craig as that sort of centre-back. Yeah. I think we need someone there who that ball that first ball comes in and they're like right that ball is mine this midget behind me is not getting this ball I'm heading this away and they get up and they fucking head it away like why I don't see how Godden can rise unchallenged and head that no in. and they shouldn't have missed it and that was the main thing for me I think we, we just we didn't wake up did we really no, we started not for 30 minutes so. frankly yeah and I mean the main positive for me is that we only lost 2-1 to a team that I think will be Quite up there, and we but getting... saying that they did give Davies some nine. Well, they started with nine new players, and they're obviously going to get better as they go throughout the season. You think if that was us, we'd be making so many excuses about yeah. how they need time to blend and all this sort of rubbish. And they mm-hmm. just came out, scored after fifty seconds, and beat us. Which... <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the greatest start of the season, but I think. It's hard to read into the first game too much, isn't it? So I think, yeah. realistically, I think you can start... Like Daryl says, I don't think he's massively wrong with the 10 to 12 games, but fans will start to judge probably on Saturday, to be honest with you. I would have said a few weeks season. ago, the first preseason friendly is when fans yeah. start to judge. Yeah, I mean, friendlies I get, things can go wrong. First game of the season, things can go wrong, and we're notoriously bad at the first game of the season. We haven't won one since Wimbledon away. Under yeah, yeah. So... That's a long time. One in the last 10 years, I think. Yeah, only Buckle has uh, delivered a yeah. first game win. So, <laughs> the irony um, in that. Yeah. yeah. So, t- that's not a big issue. I think Saturday will be very interesting. Very interesting because we should be beating Eric and Stanley. No offence to them, but we should be. And they've just lost Jackson. They still got Billy Key? I assume so. Yeah, they do have to love Billy Key. Yeah. So, should, should still beat them. And yeah. he's not exactly an aerial threat, I don't think. He's pretty small. No, he's a small guy. Yeah, so. so it's a 3 0 win, right? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the pain is called bringing the pain. All right, hold on. We're going to talk about Hacks House of Pain. Yeah. <laughs> House of Pain. So, my biggest kind of like takeaway, well, my biggest um, plus from Peterborough was how well the midfield played because mm. the little interplay and all that. And we created a lot of chances. Admittedly, there was no one in the box at all to be dominant and kind of win headers and stuff. But that, in t- pretty much the entire second half, we had them camped within their own third, not if, not. Uh, if not in their own box. And I think that's 
that kind of made me pleasantly surprised. I was expecting a drubbing. I really was. I was mm. expecting a 4-5 nil, and I thought we were going to get absolutely spanked. But 2-1, kind of battling, loss, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, yeah, we did have a lot of possession, and we did create a few chances, like you said. The midfield in particular, I was really impressed with um, Upson. I thought he was brilliant. Lines, I thought, was quite sloppy on the ball. Uh, Circum seems to be playing sort of on the left a little bit out of position, but Upson in particular, I thought, in front of that back four, which is basically exactly what we wanted from a CDM, just to sit in front yeah. of the back four, get the ball, give it simple, and he even had a few bursts up the pitch with it, I think, and passed it off to attackers and stuff, so I was really impressed with him. Um, Definitely touch his shirt, though. Yeah, it does. 100%. What black boots? No, I think they're all white. I think they're all white. Uh, letting the side down. What do you think, seriously, of James Clark at left back? I feel like you're going to say you like it. I do like <laughs> it. I like it. <laughs> I really actually your play. I love it when he plays. I love him. <laughs> you love a utility player. That's I what do. Like. I do Someone like. that can play anywhere along what, their What does he offer, though? I know he's, he's massively out of position, but... He's out of position. Could he... Do we need to get a lone left back in if we can go put James Clark there? Or does that make you feel really nervous? Because that makes me feel, for a few games, we can do it and we can save ourselves some wages. I wouldn't feel too upset if he was there for a bit as a stopgap. Not on the left. I don't mind him being a backup on the right. Don't like him being on the left. I don't think it suits him very well. I'd rather have Leds there, I think. At least he's got some pace. Defensively, I think he's all right there. But I think what we massively lose from having him there is we basically don't have any attack. Down is the that why Sarko had to get carried out that way? I don't know, but obviously with, with Daryl likes his wingers to come in, whoever mm. was on the left, it was maybe Sarko or Bennett. I think they were maybe switching. If they're then coming in, what you like ideally want is your left back when they come in, bombing on so that that player can then knock it down the wing or he takes a man away and then yeah. they carry on inside. When you've got James Clark there who I'm pretty sure just pretty much sat there, which is fair enough because he's out of position, but then you massively lose. I think maybe when Holmes Dennis is fit and he's playing there. But we agree he's out of position. He's not, he's massively out of position. Because I think his position is probably utility defender. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but he's right footed, isn't he? So his yeah. position can't yeah, be yeah. left back. Yeah. Like, can't yeah. be. Yeah. Also, I really wish that we did these podcasts on video sometimes because the hand gestures you've just made to explain James Clark and the wingers. Yeah, like, like, it's wingers. nice, it's good. It's, it's literally, good. like, I can't, I can't <laughs> think how you would ever explain this to people. It's quite upsetting when we have to take pictures of you. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's move on to Aki then. Uh, so would either of you make any changes to the lineup from the one that we played against Peter And if so, what would they be? Just chuck pain in. Yeah. Would you play the same formation as in four three three with Rodman and Bennett either side of Payne? Is that what you'd go with? Yeah, yeah, I would. I think we should stick with that and kind of develop it. Um, Weren't you saying earlier that you'd like two up front? I didn't say I'd like it. I expect that's what will happen. Mainly okay. because I can't see why you would need the number tens if it's not for that. So yeah. <sighs> yeah. Now you mention it. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what happens. But I would want to develop that lineup for quite some time, just play them a few games and kind of get them going. Um, my only change would probably, except for Payne up front, would probably be Broadbent in for either of the centre-backs, probably. But that's, I appreciate that most people probably wouldn't want Broadbent in there straight away. But I don't know who you would drop. I'd that's... go with Craig. I'd get, I'd drop Craig and have Broadbent and Locks. Um, what would you do with the attack? Would you put any of the new strikers in? Or yeah, Payne, pain obviously. I'd, yeah. I'd do a switch, uh, straight swap for uh, Nichols and then pretty much the rest of the side is as is. I'm pretty happy with how... Do you think we need was... three central midfielders, including the central defensive midfielder, at home to Accrington Stanley? I th- Personally, I don't. But... I like the shape of it. Because mm. you had yeah, ups and sitting deep and then lines and circum slightly ahead. I really like that shape. Do and we know what Accrington play? No, that's but, probably the main thing, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Daryl will obviously tailor it completely to yeah. what they play, yeah. with, which we're just. But in terms of personnel, you would, in terms of strikers, you basically start paying. That's, that's the main. So thing. I'd quite like four four two, Rodman and Bennett on the wings with Upson and Circum in the middle, and then Payne next to either Nichols or Riley. Every front. time you say Payne, it like makes makes me get goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> It's a really powerful name, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is quite powerful. That's definitely a shirt on back of the shirt name, that definitely. That would be a lot better than some of the ones you've had in previous years. Yeah, well, Blizzard. 
Uh, Max on Brian. Another shocker. Brian's Brian. not a great name to have on the back. It's no, a good probably, player. You've got boring, shocking though. players. Blizzard, didn't you have Mark Wright? I didn't get right. No, I oh, didn't. No, I didn't. That was well. I got the Towie Mark Wright. <laughs> not really. You had um, uh, Lockyer, didn't you, last time? Yeah, That's I didn't get Lockyer. Yeah. yeah, I didn't oh, get Lockyer. Oh, right. no, not right. too bad. So Blizzard's the only shocker. Blizzard, there, really. I had Lambert. You know the classics. Yeah. All in all, Blizzard was the only real. real okay. Fuck up. I did do a disservice there. Yeah, that's a real fucker. Um, I right, did a disservice. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some score predictions then to finish off. So Mets, what's your score prediction for Saturday? Two one Rovers. Scorers. Pain, pain. Double pain. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> oh dear. Um, uh, just a, just a classic one now at home, innit? No no dramas. Uh, I'm not going to go with the debut goal. I'll go with uh, with a cheeky circum goal. Oh, yeah, lovely. circum goal. It's going to slide into the bottom corner. And may I ask you, Nino? You may. I'm going to go one nil. Accrington Stanley. Billy Key. You. Bastard! <laughs> what the hell? G- give us your reasoning. I want to hear it. Because they're our bogey team. They're How many bogey, bogey teams here? have we got? Are yeah, our I mean, bogey team? admittedly, 70 out of 72 in the Football League are our bogey team. <laughs> but Stanley are really our bogey team. That's why they always beat us. Do you remember us ever beating Accrington Stanley? Actually, I do. We've been 4 1 at some point. I remember us beating Accrington Stanley, but too long ago. Yeah. Kind of My point is, they usually beat us. So, and I, I just think it's got the feeling of, you know, people are quite excited now. It's got two new signings, it's got a new number nine in, in pain. Basically, Steph and Payne. Yeah. Um, Steph and Payne. Booed off of the hip. It of <laughs> does feel like the talky game under Buckle, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, massive disappointment, defensive error, everyone's screaming abuse at the players. Yeah. <laughs> and Where's chance. the stands? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh God. God. Oh, God. Sausage rolls are bankrupting us all. Yeah, anyway, right. can't even afford food at the moment anymore. Yeah, have to start nice. putting ads mid pod, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, sponsored by Very Expensive Sausage Rolls Limited. Well, we can do one of those like <laughs> maybe feed... we can take mid bet now that they're. Ah. I was thinking like, more like go really the other way and do like a feed the pod kind of appeal, like feed the children, like charity. <laughs> Like, four pounds can buy one sausage roll. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you need per game? <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Feed the pod. <laughs> oh, I'm completely right. Now you've started singing, I completely forgot I wanted to do this. I'm going to go massively back, just very quickly, to Tariq Holmes Dennis. <laughs> Because I want you to sing us the Holmes Dennis chant that you came up with. I can't remember what it was. What was it? Do you remember in the group chat when he was announced and we all started putting our Holmes Dennis chants in? Tariq Holmes Dennis. Tariq Holmes Dennis. Tariq Holmes Dennis. Mets, if you're not aware, that is the... Coronation Street theme tune. Oh, I'm aware. Is that a ten? What would you give that? That's a two. Would not sing. A two. Again. I'm sorry. I'm really upset about the Bakioko because that there's a lot you can do with Bakioko. Oh, loads. Hundred percent. Reminds me of JP Kalala. Yeah. <laughs> we had some good songs out yeah, there. Yeah, he was only there for a month. Yeah, he was worth it just for the chance. Alone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to get that in because I thought it was really shit. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's all you've got time for today. Just in time for Mets to get to the planetarium. Lovely stuff. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we're going to finish by playing Max's pre-recorded interview with Ashley Belston. And it's a brilliant listen, so uh, we hope you enjoy that. And we will speak to you again soon. Up the gas. Up the gas. Up the gas. Hi, guys. Thanks. Um, I'm here with Ash Belston, who is um, organising the Martin Belston Charity Memorial Game um, on August 12th. Hi Ash, how are you? Hello Max, I'm good mate, yeah? Yeah, good thanks. Ash is a top gas head. Do you want to tell, tell us a bit about the, this charity game then? So, yeah. it's on August 12th. How, how did this come about then? Because it's, it's, in, it's in memory of your granddad, isn't it, Martin? It is in memory of my granddad, yeah. So we, we lost my granddad in uh, October of 2016, so nearly two years ago. Um, I think I was probably struggling a little bit with grief, struggling to feel my time and, and feel the void of not having him in my life anymore, which is obviously quite a difficult thing to deal with. Uh, I was out one night having a beer, and I bumped into Steve Elliott, 
and I said to Steve, Steve, I want to. It's been on my mind for a little bit. I said, Steve, I want to do a, a charity football match. And fair play to Steve, he was he was very interested, and it sort of just spiraled on from there. We done one last year. We raised six and a half thousand pounds for the the carry my granddad passed away in. Uh, this year, we sadly lost my great uncle, my granddad's brother. We lost him to cancer. Uh, it just seemed like a fitting a fitting choice of charity, to be honest. Um, they do a great job for people in Bristol. So this is St Peter's Hospice. Yeah, St Peter's Hospice. Yeah, they're, and they're on a big fundraising mission this year as well. So. It'd be some much valuable needs for them, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, can you tell us a bit about the event last year and, and, and how well that went, and then what's what's sort of given you the motivation to do it again this year, make it bigger and better? Uh, so, we, we raised six and a half grand last year. We had a crowd of around seven hundred people. That's, that's really good. Yeah, it was. Yeah, for the first year, I was, I was a little bit shocked and a little bit taken back, to be honest, by by how many people we had there. And it's one of those as well where you sort of think like, do I do it again? Can I yeah. beat it? Can I? And I I think this year was is set to be a lot better yeah. than last year was, and a lot bigger. The, the caliber of player we've got in is is probably a lot a lot more legend like than last year, should we say? Yeah, sure. So, um, who, who have you got playing this year? That, that, um, the big names. Uh, I got Barry Hells, Nathan Ellington. I got Vitas Astafias flying in from Latvia. Sergio Amos flying in from Holland as well, which just a- absolutely, <laughs> just absolutely blows my mind. Yeah, like to know that two people are. Yeah, that they're still connected to the club so much that they they want to they want to do this after so many years. Yeah, I think it shows what a special fan base we've got as well. Yeah, the fact yeah, that absolutely. that they're paying out of their own pocket to come back and, and see us. I mean, they're going to be at the Accrington game on the Saturday as well. Yeah. And then That'd be fantastic. The, yeah, the fact that they want to do that, I think that shows how, how much we can rub off on players. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Special sort of club mentality. Yeah, we have. Special yeah. families, yeah. Yeah, it's good. I think it'd be really, really nice to see them again. Yeah. So the game itself is it's uh, Rovers Legends versus Rovers fans. It is, yeah. So the fans team, who, how is that compiled then? Is that so? I have a, I have a manager. His name's uh, Rich Rich Gurney. He selects his team. I've, I mean, it takes quite a lot of organising a day. So I really, really do not want to deal with the hundreds of messages that I get asking me if they can play. So I do put some names in. So I put well in this year, obviously, as you know. Well, as a fan rather than a legend. as a fan, yeah. I can never be. I can never be any further than ten feet away from him when he's in Bristol. So uh, yeah, yeah. He, he has to play. That's that's the rule. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I put in Ravers Ram. So I think Ram's done quite a lot of a lot of work yeah. for charity this year. Ram's done some fantastic work for Mary Curie. Yeah, yeah, I think Ram deserves Ram deserves a spot. Yeah. So um, there's there's some there's some fans you put in there because of the charity work yeah. they've done and work they've done for the club. Yeah, I've like, pit Pete Dunford this year as well. Yeah, I think it's fitting with that's fitting. With yeah, Jeff. that's yeah, that's, that's I don't fair. need any explanation. Yeah. Um, other than that, Rich picks what what he deems to be a team that will go out and give the the ex pros the biggest challenge. Yeah. Did you did you you did some charity? You did, sorry, you did some uh, some raffle for the. Um, we did do a raffle, yeah, for, for, the, for another starting position. We did, and uh, Josh Warren won that one. Yeah. And I asked Josh what number he wanted, and he wants number seven. Big ask. Wait, is a bit because you have to have a good game. If you're wearing number seven, yeah. You can't have a bad game. No, no. You, no you, you have to have a good yeah. game in that. So. Number seven is, is sort of the best midfielder on the park. So. I, I'm expecting big things from Josh. So you've given him the number seven? Then? I've given him number seven, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you ask for it, it's yeah. Alpha Mel. He's gone in, he said, I want seven. Well, fair enough. If he's asked for it, you know, you, you know he's, got, he's got to prove he's got to perform now. Yeah. He's got to perform now. OK, well, that's good. So what was the scoreline last time? Uh, it was 6-2 last year to the, to the veterans team. Yeah, to, to the ex-players. Yeah, yeah the, the ex-players, yeah. And you're expecting sort of same again this year? Or, I would, there's, a bit, <laughs> there's a bit more attacking talent in there this I year, think, isn't there? You know? I, I wouldn't necessarily want to be defending against Barry Hells and Nathan Ellington yeah, no on, what a, their ages are, on, yeah. a, on a Sunday afternoon, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure I'd be up for that either. No, no, I don't think I would be. But I think I'm sure I'll give it a good go. And the, the winner is going to be charity, isn't it? I think we're going to raise yeah, there is a lot of money. The, the winner is obviously St Peter's Hospice and and the community that, that Rovers fans have created as well. I suppose. Yeah, and I think it does. It's more more than just money for me. It raises like a raises a lot of awareness about things. Yeah. Like about different things, and also like on a, on a personal view, I'd say that like grief can affect everyone in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know it's affected like my own mental health probably in the last two years. And, I think like it's okay to look, like this helps me it helps me massively to show like what a great fan base we have and how everyone loves each other and that sort of stuff and as cliche as it sounds it's, 
it is okay not to be okay. Yeah, I no, think if, absolutely. If people can take that message from this day as well, like, I'd be yeah, be just as made up with handing over money if one person can walk away from today and think, actually, I'm not feeling okay, but I can still go out and do stuff, and I can still go out and do things. Yeah. So for me, that would be a big win if anyone can uh, if anyone can take that message. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Mental health is it's good that we're talking more about it. I think and, so. Um, if this can stimulate that, then I fully agree. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. I think everyone has problems, and like I said, grief is a very funny thing. We all go through it, and yeah. some some people take it absolutely. in different ways. And absolutely. And like I said, this grief is what's driven me to, to yeah. arrange this day. What, what a fantastic memory you're leaving for your, for your, for your granddad. Yeah. And, I think as long as I'm alive, I don't think I'll ever let his name die. Yeah, so is this something you'll be looking to do more regularly then in years think, to come? I think so, yeah. I was, I was going to leave it as a one-off, but it was so good that you can't, yeah. you kind of can't walk away from it and there's, there's never a shortage of ex-players that want to be involved. And once you get the ball rolling, it's, it, the interest yeah. is always there. People start to see it as an annual thing, I guess. And yeah. They, they go, oh, when's the next... That's got to be coming soon, isn't it? The next Martin Belston Memorial yeah. match, and yeah, exactly the interest that. is always going to be there because you know we've always got, we've all got a love for ex-players and legends, and, and and not just that, but as a fan base in the summer as well. You know, it's good to go to games and, and as a community keep going. I guess I think so. Yeah, and I think that also as well, I must say that the football club have been absolutely fantastic this year. Yeah, they provided all the kit, a lot of publicity, fantastic, a lot of help with you know getting in contact with people and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think, it's, again, it shows that although we seem to be moving in probably a slightly more commercial direction, we're getting better. Tom Gorin does a great job. Um, and I know there's a few mumblings around the fan base about how maybe we're not so much of a family club anymore, but I think that days like August the 12th will prove, actually, although we are trying to generate more income and maybe not everyone agrees with the way that that's done, actually, when it really matters, we're still there as a family club. Yeah, the club pulls together. Yeah, I mean we got we got four uh, first team players coming along to watch. So Ollie, okay. Ollie Clark, Tom Broadbent, Chris Lyons, and Stuart Sinclair are coming. Fantastic. Uh, Daryl Clark's also coming to watch. I think Tom Gorin just coming to watch. So you know, is yeah, and, and Wild himself is playing. Wild well. himself is playing as well, which is yeah. absolutely hilarious for me because yeah. I can't wait to have a good laugh at him afterwards. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't. Someone doesn't two foot him, and uh, yeah, I, and, yeah. Our, and our owner is uh, in, a, in uh, crutches for six weeks. Well, you can't afford crutches. So. <laughs> yeah, I've heard no. he's skin. He is, he is a bit of skin. So uh, no, listen, it's going to be a great day, yeah. I'm really, and I'm really looking forward to it. And like I said to you. It shows what a great community club we still are. Absolutely, yeah. So, so the date is August the 12th. August the 12th. Where and when? Is it Mangotsfield? So the, the, the turnstiles open at 12.30. Okay. And the kickoffs at 2 o'clock. Okay, and, and how much is it to, to get in? It's £5 across the board for everyone. Under fives are free. Under fives but, are free? Yeah, kid, adult, anything, it's, it's £5. All the money goes to charity, so I just thought one price is, is nice. a, £5 is a fair price for everyone, I yeah, would say. Yeah, that's, that's more than fair. And, have you got anything else going on around the ground on the day? We do. We have a we have a Banksy Castle. Have like a, the Rovers Community Trust have also donated like the big inflatable goal net you see with like the, the targets on it. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, we have a hog roast face painters, a, like a glitter glitter person that puts glitter on your face. So lots going on there. Yeah, sweet stall. Um, absolutely loads going on. Captain Gas is going to be there as well. And is there going to be a, a raffle as well? There is. There's a raffle and an auction, and uh, the whole day is being filmed by, by Screen Soccer that film the film the Rovers games and show you the highlights in the bar after they're kindly coming along and, and filming the whole day. That'd be Just, fantastic. Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be a real real good day, and I think we'll probably build on last year. I'm hoping. Yeah. If we had 700 last year, I'd like to think that we will be able to get more this year. Maybe break the thousand barrier. That would be good. I would be absolutely ecstatic if that happens. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I hope it goes well for you, Ash. And um, unfortunately, I can't be there myself because yeah. I'm, I'm away on holiday. But selfish. Though. Very selfish. Yeah. I've deliberately. Selfishly, Max has decided that he's going away. Yeah, I talk the talk and I, and I back you, mate. But uh, yeah. Sorry, mate. It can't be absolutely there, terrible. <laughs> no, but I, I hope you get a big turnout. No, thank and, you, mate. Um, I appreciate I'm sure it. It'll go fantastic and. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll follow you on social media and see how it goes. And yeah, hopefully yeah, lots of people go. And um... I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to talk about it, am I? So, <laughs> so, no, know. absolutely not. But it'll be all right. Well, thanks for talking to us about it, and uh, I hope it goes well. No worries, Max. Thanks for having me on. All right. Cheers, Cheers. pal. Cheers. Bristol Rovers fans podcast.